Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing this brand new Hyundai petrol powered rear roller mower. Okay then, so the great guys over at Hyundai sent us this brand new petrol mower, the HYM 430 SPER, to give it its full title. Now I hope it's going to be easier to put together than it is to spell out, but it looks a fantastic machine, and my goodness it's heavy. The box is a bit battered, I think, you know, some of these couriers aren't great, are they? They've got a lot of drops to do in a day, but it's here, it's in one piece, we're going to get it open, assemble it, and then we'll cut some grass. Grass box is the first thing out. I don't know if we've got to put that together or not. No, it looks pretty much all there to me. Bit of bubble wrap to protect the mower. Cardboard in there. Nuts, bolts, charger. Oh, blimey. Why have we got a charger? Ah, I remember now. Yeah, it's push button start. So there's a bonus. Push button start. We've got a rope as well, just as a backup. So the instructions are in there and don't forget you get a three year warranty as well so fill your warranty card in too i'll put that down and then last but not least we've got the main mower itself right i'm going to need a hand with this so we better cut the video i'll get this out of the box and then we'll put it all together well we wrestled the mower out of the box then and got it onto the grass in fact it's not as heavy as it seems it's just a bit awkward to get out of the box because they're tightly packaged to keep them safe in transit so we've got it on the floor, we've got this here, the next bit that comes out is a, another bit of handle and that fits on this, sort, this side here. And then on the top of there, we've got the main handle with all the cable connectors, nice foam grip, the levers, the push start, that's all on the end. We've just got to connect this to there and this to there and then we've got a nice fully working handle. There's not a lot else to do down the front of the machine. Um, we've got to put some oil in before we start it and we've got to charge the battery up as well before we start it. We can use a rope start but it's a little late in the day today so I think we'll get it all together. I'll put the battery on charge. It says five hours on here, it says six hours in the book so I'll leave it overnight. We know it's fully charged and we should be able to fire it up and cut the grass tomorrow. So with this, Here's all the bits in a tray. Whenever you put them together on the, on the grass, make sure they're in a tray. In fact, even if you're in a workshop, make sure they're on a tray. Uh, if you can, put this together on a workbench. It does make it easier. Or put it on a hard stand in a patio or somewhere because it will make it easier to put it all together. However, I'm putting it together on the grass because I just got it out of the box and I'm so excited. I just want to get it together. So we've got four of these. We've got two of these. We've got one spare start button and we've got a box spanner there. That's for changing the spark plug. So we don't need that at the moment. Just for the assembly, we need the six nuts and bolts over there and these other things can wait. The only thing that's not included in the box is a 13 mil spanner or socket. So I've got a 13 mil socket there, just a small one. Hopefully we should be able to fit into the gaps and tighten the things up. When we've done that, we can put the oil in. It takes 600 mil of oil and they send you a 600 mil bottle. So that's great. You know that you're going to put 90% of that in, test it and it should be there or thereabouts. In the UK, they ship these machines without oil, without fuel. They do have oil in them first because they need to make sure the engine's tested and it works. So when you take the dipstick out, there will be oil on there. So when you put this back in, there will be some in there already. So don't just tip the whole bottle in because it's likely to be overfilled. Right, that's enough of that. We'll start to get this all put together and see how long it takes and how easy it is. I've had a look through the instructions book. It's in there. There's loads of instructions. In fact, I was going to show you that. There's a handy um, guide here, a quick start, a general one for for their mower range and that's all that's all in there that's good and the actual instruction booklet itself there's tons of photographs in there they're not as self-explanatory as you might think but if you watch this video i'm sure you'll just look at these and you'll remember where everything is and it'll be a piece of cake it really will right let's get started then first things first we'll put this on 
So then, to put this lower part of the handle on, what we have to do is position this and fix it through the hole at the top. Now, we use these fixings here. They've got a small square on there and a nut on the other side. Now, the small square goes through on the outside and sits in the square on the handle. It pushes all the way through and you put the nylock nut on the inside. So I've done that one already. I'll do this one over here. There's a bit of force required to just bend the handle in because it just makes for a better fit. It's always sort of trying to spring itself out and it's pushing against the lock nut and it's tight then. So that's as easy as that. Those two are in and now that moves up and down, pivots like this. Now here's the clever bit. We've got two height settings on here. So if we put the, the next bolt, this one with, an, with a spinny end on, nice and easy to undo and redo. So you can undo that and fold the handle up or down. We can get this and we can put it through here, which gives us a low setting on the handle, or we can tip it up and give us a higher setting on the handle. Now, because I'm quite tall, I'll put it on the higher setting. And again, we've got the same sort of bolt. We haven't got a square on this end because this is just round, but it is actually shaped round. So it fits flush with the bar through there. Turn it round, it should fit flush. And then on the inside, we put it through the black bracket. We then put a washer on to hold everything in place. And then we spin this up behind it. So, We'll just lift it up to there. Highest tight setting. Make sure that's locked in. Pop the washer on. And then we spin that up. You can tighten that up because this is sits tightly against the framework because it's shaped to do so. It's held tight and it won't move. Fantastic. I'll just do the one over this side now. So that's those two tightened up as well with your 13 mil spanner and you don't need it anymore. That's all you need it for, just these two here. You don't have to go really tight with them, just tighten them up, nip them up, just so they hold the thing in place. They've got nylock nuts on there and this is trying to force itself out as it is so they'll be locked in there tight so no need to worry now this is one of the most difficult bits <laughs> is putting this handle on but there's no need to worry when you put this handle on we worry about the cables and where the cables will go now on here we've got plenty of length of cable that's so you can bend the bars over and put them out of the way now we should sit that on top like this and these cables clip there and run up the outside and as you can see we've got loads of slack on there and this is a starter button cable. And as you can see again, we've got loads of slack on here. If they're twisted or around the wrong way, you can put the handle through and it will come up and they'll be on the other side if you prefer. So put this through, or if worse comes to worst, you can just take the bottom one off and put it on there. We were lucky today and they were on the right side when we put it together. It doesn't always happen, but I think the most difficult thing is, now for me anyway, is probably trying to put this together single-handedly now again these fit on the inside so we'll take the washer off we've got the bolt there which is curved to fit on the metal there and grip we've got the washer on the inside to take the pressure and then this will spin up and lock everything in place so i'll put that on there lift this up to where it needs to be doing it all by feel i think that's the hole yeah, we've got that in. We put the washer on without pushing the bolt out, which I nearly did. And then we can spin it up, hopefully. I don't know how easy that will be to do on my own. Yeah, it's caught. So that's it, and that's spun up. And that's that one done. Now, be wary, because you're doing that up, and even though it's tight, he still might drop down. Oh, we've got this one here. We'll just do the same over this side. Push that in. If we can line it up. God, that was easy. I tell you, on these machines, they're nice 
holes in there. There's no swarf in any of the holes. They're clean drilled. Easy to thread the bolts through on all of them. Push that together. And that's it. The complete handle assembly done. How great is that? All we've got to do is sort the cables out, but I'll turn the mower around so you can see what I'm doing. And then uh, put the grass box on, fill it with oil and we're good to go. So now then, the all important cable adjustment. We've got two cables here. This one, which runs across the top and that controls the engine on and off. And then we've got this one here, which is for the drive. So when we've got this, I think I can't remember how it works. Let me have a quick look. Stop engine is this one. So when you pull that up, the engine's going and the blade's going. We release that and it stops. When we hold this up and then hold this up, it'll start the forward momentum. We can pull ourselves along and we'll be cutting grass and moving along at the same time. But we need to get these connected on. Now, basically you have to get this, let me just work it out, this into this hole. And it's a bit tight and it's a bit fiddly, but you just release the handle. Now, do one at a time. It does tell you on here and it does say in the instruction book, right? It tells you exactly how to do it and how to adjust them. With a bit of luck, we don't need to adjust them when they come from the factory. But after a few hours of wear uh, and use, the, things can start to stretch and move into place. So you might need to adjust it then. But hopefully we won't have to do that in this video and that will be in a future maintenance one. But all the information is there, so keep that safe. Now, let's have a look. I did the first thing there and lock, lost the cables. Right, this cable, so the way they fit, it's like a little shape like this, like a Tetris shape if you've ever played Tetris. And you put it through in there and it sits up and it's clipped in just like that. And then with that, you can push it back in. It's a bit tight because it's designed to be tight because it needs to control this cable. So with that in now, we're connected. And if I pull this, I don't know if you'll hear it with my microphone, but there might be a slight click when I do it. I don't know if you could pick that up, but there's a little switch on there. And when we pull this, that activates a switch and it tells us that there's somebody there, an operator at the top, and they're holding that and the engine's good to fire. If this doesn't work properly and doesn't flick that switch, then the machine won't run at all. So you must be able to hear that click, okay? And the second one here, this is for the drive of the machine. And again, we'll pop this out, pull it forward a little bit if we can. Then we slot this through, as easy as that. It's easy when you know how, I've done hundreds of these and it's easy, but when you first do it, it's very daunting and you worry. And now that's down there and that's our drive. When we pull that, we can see our cable moving and we can hear it down there pulling the pulley backwards to activate the drive. So that's it, that's those two done. Now all we've got to do, clip these cables on. We've got a double one here. I'll try and hold them sort of tight together. Put them on top. That's that, nice and tidy out of the way. And then this one, we'll have a look at this. Oh. These clips are tight, that's good though, it's good that they're tight. We'll put this on the inside because we'll keep it out of the way of the starting rope. So if we put this one up, probably about here. Right, that's up there. Now we'll give ourselves a little bit of slack at the top. If you're ever gonna have any problems with electrics, it's normally on the joints where they go in. So we've got this on here, we give ourselves a bit of slack. So if it ever gets pulled, we've got the slack to move first before it just pulls on the joints and then we'll put the second one down here. Then you'll have to see, I, for me, I won't be folding this mower up again. It will just stay up and it will be sat in the shed until we use it. So there's no need. But if you're transporting it around or moving it around, you might want to adjust these positions slightly. So it makes it easier for you to fold up. Now we've got plenty of slack down the bottom, plenty of slack up the top. That's those two done. I'm happy with that. We can move on now to putting the oil in the engine and moving the starting rope. Now we have to turn our attention to the engine. And uh, I and I kindly put in the box a 600 mil bottle of oil and the engine takes 600 mil. However, like I said before, they're filled with oil 
they're tested, they empty the oil out before they ship them. In the UK anyway, that's the law. So we have 600 mil to put back in, but please don't put all of it in because you'll likely overfill it. Because when you drain an engine, you cannot get every drop of oil out. And also the other thing is, this starting rope goes up there and you might want to zoom ahead and try and finish your handle setup by pulling this up there. But please don't, because when you pull this, you can pull it to there and it'll stop, you feel some resistance. As soon as you start to pull it from there, it starts to turn the engine over. And if there isn't any engine oil left at the top of the engine, you can cause some damage, some scoring in there and whatever. And you don't really want that to happen, not to your brand new mower. Put the oil in first, then we can stretch this out slowly, clip it in, and then we can start it up after that. Right, let's put the oil in. And in true fashion, I left the funnel down in the workshop, so I'm gonna go freehand and try and do it without ruining the lovely grass. I've got a piece of kitchen roll there. There's not a lot, so, Fingers crossed it goes in and it's not too bad. We twist this first of all to unlock. So it's just a simple locking mechanism. That's twisted on. Oh, I thought it was twisted on. Maybe not. Right, that's twisted on and won't come off. Then you twist it round and it un undoes, okay? We've got a minimum mark and a maximum mark on there. It'd be hard to see on a camera or try and get a photo of that. It says low and high on here. It used to be minimum and maximum in the olden days, but High and low, you don't really want it to exceed the high. We've got some crosses on there and we get it to the top of those crosses or thereabouts. As long as it's somewhere in the middle, that'll do. If you've got a little bit of oil left in your bottle, that's great because an engine does lose a bit of oil, does use a bit of oil when it's running. So you've got some to top up with at a later date. That's fantastic. We'll put this down on here. We don't really want to put it down on the grass because we don't want any dirt and debris in the engine. I'll open this oil up and I'll bet you any money there's a foil filter in there and I'll have to foil seal I mean I'll have to bodge around to try and get it off we'll have a go at just tearing it slightly now the oil that goes in here is SAE 30 or um, on here four stroke SEA 30 petrol oil is, is what it is and what's recommended and you can buy this in pretty much all mower shops, DIY shops everywhere around. It's a common thing, been used for years in these four stroke engines. Now, I'll try and put this in without you, uh, oh, without me spilling it everywhere and you laughing at me spilling it everywhere. So I'll go steady. Right then, I've put about 95% of the oil in there, maybe a little bit more than that. I'll just give it a couple of seconds to go down and we'll see what we've got. Push it down and lock it into place. Some people just dib them from the top, always put it into place. Plenty of warning stickers on here, you know, caution, read the manual first, SAE 30 or 1540 in there, unleaded petrol only. This is the oil filler on this side, don't put petrol in here. The petrol filler's over on this side and it's got a picture of a petrol pump on top and an oil can on there. So it's pretty foolproof. No matter whatever language you speak, we all understand these symbols. So that's had a bit of time in there. We'll pull it out. And lo and behold, it's just up to the line on high. Just up to. So like I say, don't throw the full 600 in. Just leave it a dribble in the bottom of the bottle. And then if you store that in a couple of weeks time, you might need to top it up a little bit and you can just put that last little bit in and it'll be great. So there we go, that's done. We've got everything done on there as I can think of. All we've got to do now, we can go and put it on charge. We're gonna leave it overnight and then when we come back tomorrow, we can put the grass box together, have a look at the controls of the mower, see how it all works and then hopefully we'll be able to cut a bit of grass. So here we are then folks, it's the next day. We put the mower on charge overnight. I've been to work this morning, so I left it on all day. Um, while I was off camera, I also put some fuel in while I was messing about with it. Now, an interesting fact is when we charged it up, we plugged the mower in. There's a, a little red light on the charger. You plug the lead into there and just a plug straight into a 13 amp plug. And when it's fully charged up, the little LED light changes from red to green. So you know it's fully charged, which is a great thing really, isn't it? So that's it. But a couple more things to do before we can mow. One is to put this rope up to where it needs to be. So if we gently ease this out, 
and twist it round. Now we don't do that before because we didn't have any oil in the engine, but we've got oil in there and that's all fine. And then the next thing we do is with the grass box, it's all pretty much fully assembled. There's a couple of things to do. We've just got to put these little clips in on the side. They just hold it onto the bar and they just push the bottom out. So we hold, clip these in over here. Easier said than done, eh, when you put on the spot. So that's that one clipped in. And then this one clipped in over there. And then we just clip in this one on the bottom just to hold everything in place. Should have started at this end as well. So start at both ends and work your way towards the middle. That's it. It's all clipped on and done. There we go. Got a great grass box. And that clips on the back. Simple, just those two hooks slide on. And that's it. We're all done and ready to mow. Thanks for watching this, the assembly video. If you'd like to see it in action and we'll actually cut a bit of grass at it, then please click the link and see us in part two. I'm Jimmy the Mower. I'll catch you on the next one.